What's up guys, welcome back to Investing PH. So if you've watched some of my portfolio update videos, you know that I am a big follower of dividend investing. And by the way, if you haven't watched my last video on why dividend investing is the best, better watch it after this. Anyway, so for this video, I will be sharing with you the top 4 dividend stocks in my portfolio that I am willing to hold for a long time, and if possible, forever. Because as I've explained over and over again, dividends play a big role in growing your portfolio, and the more I reinvest it, the bigger the dividend snowball effect. So for me, investing in great companies that you can hold for a long time is the way to go when using a dividend investing approach so that you can tap into the power of compounding interest. Now I won't be diving too much on the company's financials like I normally do in my videos to make this video short. So what I'll be showing are important criteria to look at when looking for dividend stocks. First, the company's earnings should be growing steadily over the years since dividends are tied to how much the company is earning yearly. The more the company's earnings grow, the higher the chance they will pay out dividends, and sometimes they even increase it. The same for their equity, we want a company that grows its assets. And of course, one of the most important is their debts should be manageable. Debts can be a killer for companies, and if that company is using debt to pay out their dividends, then that isn't a good sign. We want a company that has more assets than its liabilities. Another factor I'm looking at is their business. Would this last for a long time? Can they grow more in the future? And of course, the last criteria is, do they pay dividends consistently? And how much do they pay out? Now if you notice, this is the last criteria since dividend yield can sometimes be a trap. As I've said, some companies pay out their dividends by using debts to attract investors which is not a good long-term strategy. I am sure if that company does that, then they wouldn't be able to sustain it. That's why, look at their financials first, their debts, and their business. If you like it so far, then that's the time that you would assess its dividend yield. Now some of the data I'm showing today came from Simply Wall Street. This platform is an amazing tool to track your stocks and your portfolio. So if you want to try it out, use my link down below to get your 14-day free trial. And that's not all. If you do sign up using my link, you get an outstanding 30% discount. So grab this opportunity now. Anyway, the first stock in my portfolio that I'm willing to hold forever is Globe Telecom. Globe is one of the leading telecommunications company in the Philippines. Also provides other technology services like its well-known app Gcash. And they have a very diversified portfolio which is also in line with the company's business in the telecommunications and technology side. Now Globe is still upgrading their services, and for me will continue to do so in the future. Now for their financials, net earnings are growing each year. Although there are some years wherein they have some negative growth, but they easily got back up. They have a 10-year compounded growth rate of 16.05%, which is really good. And as to how well they're growing their assets, their total equity is consistently growing each year with a compounded growth of 10.62%. And for their debts, this is where they slightly fall short. But I'll explain later why this is okay for me. For their current ratio, it's only 0.45, which is kinda low since what I look for is for this to be above 1. This means they only have 0.45 pesos of current assets for each current liabilities. Now when we look at other companies in the same industry, PLDD, their biggest rival, is in the same standing as Globe. Their current ratio is 0.44, even slightly lower. This can also be seen in their debt to equity. Globe has a debt to equity of 3.03, .03, so for every 1 peso of equity, they have 3.03 .03 pesos of liabilities. This is higher than what I usually look at, which should be below 2. But if we compare it to PLDD, it also has a high debt to equity ratio, which is at 4.03. So industry-wise, the two giants in that field have this average ratio. So for me in Globe's case, it's still accepted especially if you look at their earnings which had grown at a good rate. And as for their dividends, Globe is consistent in their payout and is also increasing as the years pass and we can see how in line their dividend payout is with their earnings. The more their earnings grow, the same for their dividends. So for me, since I bought Globe at a cheaper price, my dividend yield for this company is standing at 5.6%, but for the price right now, which is 2,338, Globe's dividend yield is at 4.70%. That's why just by holding this company, I'm already earning a good amount each year, and with how Globe is still innovating, I know they would continue to grow for the years to come. 
The next company is DNL. This is also a holding company and is dominant in their field. Actually, I think they have a monopoly in their sector, which is really great. Their businesses range from food ingredients, specialty plastics, oleochemicals like biodiesel, resins, etc., and consumer products like aerosols and non-aerosol products. They have long-standing customers which I think most of us are familiar with. These are all large companies like Boysen, Nestle, Universal Robina, KFC, Jollibee, Makto, Max, Monday Nissen, and a lot more well-known brands. For their financials, pre-pandemic, they had been consistent in their growth. Their only negative growth during that time was due to their one-off gain in 2014, which led to the negative year afterwards. Now even though the company was affected by both the China trade war and the COVID pandemic, in 2021 and in their latest 12 months, they are now close to going back to their pre-pandemic earnings. So for their 10-year growth rate, they are growing at a compounded rate of 9.69%. And as for their equity, they've been consistent in their growth each year, growing at a compounded rate of 9.01% for the past 10 years. Now for their debts, DNL has managed them properly. Their current ratio is 1.61, meaning they can easily pay off all short-term obligations. And for their debt to equity, they have a ratio of 1.06, which is well within my criteria. Now for their dividends, DNL has been consistent in their payout and has increased it over the years. Although during the pandemic, since their earnings drop, their dividends also did. But they are almost back on track. Now though their yield isn't high compared to other dividend companies in my portfolio, since I bought it at a somewhat cheaper price, my dividend yield for this company is 3.52%. Now if you buy it at its price right now of 7.07, .07, you would have a dividend yield of 3.42%. So it's quite low compared to other companies, but it's still a good dividend paying company for me since the business is strong, earnings are consistent, and their debts are managed well. I know DNL would still grow in the future, which would then lead to its dividends increasing. The third company is DMC. Now they've given a good amount of dividends over the years, and I think a lot of us has been blessed with good returns if we bought this company during the pandemic. Anyway, this is also a holding company. Their businesses span from construction, residential development, mining of coal and nickel, power, and water services. So just buying one stock, you are already diversified to these sets of businesses. For their financials, DMC doesn't fall short as well. Although they were affected by the pandemic, they've got back up and have even surpassed their pre-pandemic earnings in 2021 and in their latest 12 months. This gives them a compounded growth of 11.61%. And as to how well they are growing their assets, they are consistent as well. The only time they had a negative growth was during the pandemic, but it's only by a small percentage. And as to how well they are handling their debts, they are managing it well. Their current ratio stands at 2.79, meaning they have 2.79 pesos of current assets for every 1 peso of liability. So they can easily pay up all short-term obligations and have more to spare. Now for their debt to equity, they only have 1.07 pesos of debt for every 1 peso of equity, which is another good ratio for them. And as for their dividends, they are consistent as well in their payout and have increased it in the past years by giving out special dividends. For me, since I bought DMC at an average cost of 5.37, I get a whopping 22% dividend yield for this year, which is outstanding. Just by holding DMC alone, I get a huge amount. Now, if you bought it at a price right now of 9.69, you get a 12% dividend yield. Now, their yield got this high because first, their stock price is still down, and they gave out special dividends this year. Now, even without their special dividends, you'd still get around 9% yield, which is still high. The fourth company that I'll be holding for a long time is LTG. It's another holding company. Now I love investing in holding companies since by owning one stock, you get to own multiple businesses. Same as our previous stocks, LTG has a very diversified set of businesses. From tobacco, banking, distilled spirits, beverages, and property development. For their financials, they also don't fall short. For their earnings, they have consistently grown over the years. Though they weren't spared by the pandemic, but now in their latest 12 months, they've got back up, surpassing their pre-pandemic earnings. With this, they have a compounded growth of 9.60%. Now the same story for their equity, which had been growing consistently year after year. 
This gives them a compounded growth rate of 12.14% in the past 10 years. And for their debts, since they have a banking business, banks usually have a high debt ratio because cash deposits are considered a liability. So looking at their debt ratios, it will surely be high. But good thing LTG gave us the answer for this. In their recent investor presentation, for June 2022, their debt-to-equity ratio with their bank holding sits at 3.68, so quite high. But without their bank holding, their debt-to-equity ratio drops to 0.14, meaning they only have 0.14 pesos of debt for every 1 peso of equity, which is really great. This lets us know that LTG is handling its debts well. And as for their dividends, same as DMC, you would love their payout. Since their price dropped hard ever since the pandemic and they increased their dividend payout, their yield of course skyrocketed up. Since I bought LTG at an average price of 9.52, my dividend yield is 9.45%. Now since the stock is still down right now, for its current price of 8.14, your dividend yield would be 11.05%. Now I would also like to mention these two stocks. These are my two REIT investments, MREIT and DDMPR. Since this is like having your own rental property, my main goal in investing in these two stocks is purely dividends to increase my cash flow. So for these two, if their price is down, I just buy more since their yield right now is high. For DDMPR, they now have a yield of 8.64% and for MREIT, 7.64%. Now these two REITs are under companies that I also believe would grow more in the future. So I just hold them for a long time and benefit from the consistent cash flow it gives me. So this ends this video for today. I hope you've learned something and if it did, be sure to click the like button before you leave. And if you still haven't tried Simply Wall Street, get your 14-day free trial by using my link below. Anyway, thank you and see you in the next video.